Hi, in this Omar Vision tutorial, I'm doing it at the request of a comment from a user. Um, this tutorial is going to be about slipping, slipping and sliding, the physics materials that make you slip and slide. So on my site, you could look for this video uh, that I did way, way back in the past, like when I first started doing these videos. And I go to my tutorial section here and I could do a search for um, slippery. And let's see if that brings it up. Yeah, here it is. This video right here, it's about using physics materials to affect the properties between two objects. So on this video, so I'm going to put a comment. Um, how do you make it slide on a flat surface, not rotated? Uh, thanks, me. Okay, let's see. So in this video, what I did is I had um, objects sliding because they were basically sitting on a surface that was tilted and then with the physics materials they sl they slid. So how do I make that sliding action happen? Without that I have a little project here that I made that I'm going to go over with you on how I did this project. So in this project here there's these blocks and you can see that this is slipping and sliding like the way the other video had just from a tilted surface and then I have this red block in the middle which I'm going to control with my arrow keys and it's slipping and sliding too. So if I press to go in a direction, it slip and slides. And I could press to spin around and it kind of, everything's kind of slippery. And if I hit other objects, you know, it slides and bumps into them and maybe knocks them off. So how do we do this? That's what we're going to do here in this video. We're going to start from scratch with a brand new Unity project. So we do it together. So let me close this down. And close this down and start over. So here I'm going to open up from Unity Hub a new project in Unity and I'm going to call it Slippery Tutorial. Slip Tutorial and I'll just let it create. Alright so here I have a new project a new 3D project and I'm just going to drop in a material for the floor that I found on the internet right here it's just a flat floor surface and let me add a floor in here 3d object I'll use a plane surface for my floor and then I'll just drop the floor material on it and let me just set the camera control shift F and then go back and select my plane again and let me tile that material up a little bit more maybe by three and three that looks better and then also let me make the floor a little bit bigger since we're going to be slipping and sliding around on it I don't want to slide off too easy so like three and three there yeah, that's a much bigger floor now I'll add in um, oh I'll also call it floor all right then I'm going to add in the player which is going to be a cube and I'll just move it above the ground and let's see this is the forward axis so let me just I'm gonna hold down the alt key and then press my mouse button and just turn this around alt key and mouse button so that forward is facing forward for me and then I'll do it again I'll reset the camera control shift F there now this cube is going to be my player so I'll name it player all right and then I'm going to have some other objects in here, the other objects that I kind of bump around. So I'll just add another cube. All right. And this cube, um, I'll just put it there. And I'll call it obstacle. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to put some obstacles like we saw those blue obstacles. Obstacle. All right. And, um, all right, now we're going to give ourselves, the player, we're going to be a certain color. So let me just make a material for the player. And the player, we had it red. All right, so I'll drag and drop red onto the player. Bam. And then I had another material for the obstacles. So obstacle. And we'll make that one like a light blue. And we'll drag and drop that on our obstacle. Bam. 
So now there's the player, there's the obstacle. Um, so the player, one thing we did have on the player was a nose. I put a little white dot as the nose so we could see where the front of the player is. So you see here, Z, this is the front. So what I'll just do is I'll select the player and I'll make a child object of the player and I'll just call it a cube. And the cube selected, I will move it forward a little bit and then I will also make it smaller, 0.2, 0.2. Point two. So let me just zoom in over here by double clicking on the player and see that we have a nose sticking out so we can tell which way is the front. Okay, and I'll call it nose. Boom. All right, now let's make our script that's going to control the player and move the player around. So over here I'll just say create a C sharp script and I'll call it control to control the player and then I'll double click over here to open up the script and I have Visual Studio set up as my script editor All right, and clear that out and start over the first thing I want to do is let the person who is actually using the script be able to tell me what the um, push force is going to be and that is a float push force and by default, I'll just give them a push force. And then I'll also have another public variable float. It's the turn, the turn force. And I'll have that equal to 45. Okay, by default. And then in here, um, private void. So there's an event for the mono behavior, the start event, and every script will call the start event when the game starts. And here in the start, I want a pointer to the rigid body. So let's make sure that our object that the script attaches to has a rigid body by using the require component. And what type of component? A rigid body. I could spell better than that. Come on, rigid body. All right, so this line over here, this require component line, what it'll do is when I, let me just save this, I'll show you right now what happens. So this control script, which you can see a little preview of it here, when I drag and drop it onto an object in my scene, if the object doesn't have a rigid body component, you see this just has a transform, a mesh filter, mesh render, and box collider, but there is no rigid body since the script, as you can see here, has the require component command, when I drag and drop that onto the player, boom, then my player gets the script, but it also gets a rigid body. So that makes sure that, you know, I have a rigid body on my player, and I'm gonna make my player have a mass of 10, okay? And while I'm at it, I guess I'll make the obstacle have a rigid body too. Rigid body means that you know the object can actually interact using physics and I'll make the um, I'll make these have a mass of 8 just a little bit lighter okay so let's go back to the player and let's go back to the script now what are we gonna do we need a pointer to that rigid body in the script so I'll make a variable for it private rigid body RB and I'll just initialize it to null then in the start function, I'll set RB equal to this, the thing that my script is attached to, and I'll get the component from it, the rigid body component. Okay, bam. So now I'll have a pointer to the rigid body component. Save. And now to control the player, I'll probably read some input from the keyboard, and I'll do my controls from the update function. The update function is an event that the model behavior class will call every frame of the game. So here I'll just add in stuff like moving, right? So I will say if input dot get key um, equals key code, and then there's a bunch of codes you can see them right there. Um, arrow up arrow to move forward equals true then what I'll do is I'll use the rigid body to move 
my player. So rb.add force. And I will add force to the objects forward. Transform dot forward. Whichever way the object is facing, that's the forward dot. And how much force will I add? Push force. And then I'll just use time dot delta time. And then the second parameter is what kind of force. So let's see what we have. If I say force mode dot, there's three of them. The acceleration, it ignores the mass. The force uses the mass. This one uses the mass. And velocity change doesn't use the mass. I'm going to use a velocity change. That's the one I was using in a demo. So now, let's see. With this script here, something may happen because I have some commands here already. So let me save the script and there's no star there now. And then I go back to Unity and I see it's processing the script and then I press um... Yeah. Alright, now I'm gonna press play <laughs> and let's see what happens when I press... Oh, uh, it moves and then it kinda it's like getting stuck to the floor I guess it doesn't really slide and it just kinda rolls over with the forward force so now comes the part where I'm gonna add um, another type of uh, material that says what kind of floor is this what kind of um, cube is this are they slippery are they bouncy so I'll go here in my assets window and I'll right click and I'll create a physics material physics material and the first one here I'm going to make is for the floor. And the floor here, when I have the physics material selected, I have dynamic friction and static friction. So the lower these two values are, the more slippery the floor will be. So let me lower them both down. Not totally, but, you know, just a little bit. And just to make it so that they are, it's a slippery material. Then I'll pick my floor. And you'll see here in the floor, I could set the material on the mesh collider by dragging and dropping this in here. Or just more easily, just like the way I did the material colors when I drag and drop them, I'll take the floor material and drag and drop it on the floor here, or more precisely, here. And then you'll see that here in the inspector window, the material for the floor became that. So now the floor has a slippery material and my cubes they don't have any kind of physics material on it yet. Let's see if that helps me be able to move. And it does. Now I'm a little bit more slidey. So both objects can have a uh, physics material. So let me make another physics material for my actual player. Physics material and um, I'll call it like the, uh, the, cube, the cubes, you know. And on this one, um, it's not going to be as slippery as the floor, so I'll make it like 0.3 and point, I don't know, 2, whatever. But then I'll also make them a little bouncy. So this can go from 0 to 1. So I'll just make them bouncy like a 0.8. Okay? And then I'll drag and drop that, put it on my player. So now for my player, you see in the um, collider, the material is a cube. So physics materials, they go on the colliders, whatever the colliders are, because it's all about how are they going to collide with something that the physics material could decide. So now the floor and the cube have um, physics materials. Eh, I just can't turn my cube around yet. So let's add some more controls here to my cube other than just moving forward. Now let's also read the left and right arrows get key means I'm just holding down the key and it's going to keep on firing off this signal and I'm going to be able to turn left arrow equals true and I'll do something else if they're pressing the right arrow going the other way key code dot right arrow equals true Okay, so if they press the left arrow, I'm going to use the rigid body because it has the physics. And I think I just, okay. RB dot. So for um, moving the object, there's add force. There's another kind of force, like a twisting force, and that's called torque. So I could add torque to 
spin my object. All right. And the axis that I'm going to add it in is the vector um, three dot up. So the reason I'm using up, if you think about it, this is the thing and up is this way. So I want to turn spinning around this axis, which is the Y axis, the up axis. So when I add torque, I'm adding it on the Y axis. That's the axis I'm turning on. And to turn left, I have to go in the minus direction for my turn force. I'll just add a minus turn force times time dot delta time. And then that means the opposite will be true to turn right. Instead of a minus force, I'll add positive force. So I'll just copy and paste and take off the minus there. So now let's see when I press play here. What happens is I could turn left and right. It's not turning left and right. I go forward, but I'm not turning left and right. Why? probably because here I use the force mode velocity change where it ignores the mass and here I didn't use a force mode so let's make sure we're using the velocity change for the force mode in both of these situations here for turning okay and you could try the other force modes and see what happens so now with the force modes on and the scripts processed now let's see what happens when I press play. And if I turn left and right, and there's a little bit of a slide after I'm turning left and right. And then I can move forward. And yeah, you can see it's sliding around a little bit. It's not just solid. So there we go. We got the object there. And now just for the heck of um, showing the old tutorial, let me just put some of the things here. Like let me duplicate the floor. I select floor and press control D and now I have a copy of the floor and on this one I'm going to rotate it a little bit so I could have those objects that slide in and oh, a little twist in there um, and let's see I could see right here when I move it up enough so let's see if it there you go moves up enough to touch the floor and then I'll make another one control D and this one on the side here and oh, maybe like that just so I could make that scene that I had in the little demo in the beginning. And let's move this one. Here we go. It's in there. And now I could have some more objects to bump around into if I just duplicate my obstacle. So I could use Control D. One, and there's one. Two. Three, control D. I'm just making copies of this guy. Control D. And one of them, I'm going to put them up here. And I think I made them a little fatter on the Y, on the uh, X, no, fatter on the X and the Z so that he didn't just flip over. There we go. Let's zoom in on him a little closer. All right. And pick them up. Just push them down. These will be my examples of the ones that it still does the sliding. Um, and let's make them heavier. This one is going to be weight of 20. Since I'm a 10, this is a 20. I got one there, and then I'll copy two, three, and four, and hey, let's put one over here, five. All right, so we got a couple of objects now in the scene there that, and they all have a rigid body and physics with a material. Ooh, you know what? Darn it. I just made all these blue guys, but I didn't give them a material. So let's make them have a material the same as our red player. Let's put these together. I could do that. I could still put the material on them. Let me select them all and see if this works. I select them all and then I drag and drop cube on all of them. Does that work? I don't think so. <laughs> oh well, let's start over again from scratch. Let me delete these duplicates and take the first obstacle and drag the cube material on them. Bam. Okay. 
now I can start making my duplicates. Duplicate. And let's take the duplicate and move it around a little. Duplicate, move it around a little. Duplicate, give it around a little. Duplicate, move it around. Now I'll put some of the ones that I duplicate over here. Here's one, and I'm gonna increase the size to like three, three. Okay, on this duplicate, and I'm also gonna make it heavier. Let's make it a 20. All right, I'm doing it again what I did before. And control D. Another one over here, another one. There we go. And just to have some stuff in the scene. So let's see if I got my camera nice so I can see everything. Good. So I'll set my camera again. Control Shift F with the camera selected there. And let's try this out. Let's see what happens now. If I press play, those should slide and bounce a little. Yep. So that's like the first video, the old one from a long time ago. And now this. I could slide around and bump into these guys. So I hope that answers um, the commenter's question about how can I do slip and slide without, you know, bending the floor. And the answer to that question is to use the rigid body add force or the rigid body add torque. Thank you.